not attempt to adjust your computer screens because we are in there. Hey folks, my name is Steve Prince and I'm the director of engagement at the Muscarella Museum at William & Mary. Hey, we have a wonderful show lined up for you today. Today we're going to work on the process of making a still life drawing of this transparent vase. And I'm going to walk you through step by steps in finding the simplicity that lies underneath this complex object. So are you ready? So let's get our materials together. Oh, this is the reprise of the phone call Wednesday. Everybody ready to get your phone call? Let's go. Way at Melissa. Way at Laura. Come on. Come on. Come on. So y'all ready? So these are the materials that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a number two pencil or softer. You're gonna need paper of any size and you're gonna need an eraser. So you ready? Come on, let's get this stuff out. And for the demonstration, I'm gonna utilize a marker so that you can get nice strong contrast so you can see everything at home. So one of the first things we want to do is looking at this object, we want to go back to our word in which we're working with in terms of the workshops, and that word is the gestalt. The gestalt by definition means the whole to the part. I repeat, the whole to the part. That concept is when we look at this vase, we want to try to see what kind of object or shape can we break this down to in its most simplest form. Now, get a picture in your mind and look at it. So what object do you see in your mind? Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Now, I may have a different image or a different shape in mind that does not mean that your shape is wrong or mine is right. It basically means that we see things a little bit differently, but the good clue, the good clue is that we need to break it down to something more basic. And the item that I broke it down to is actually a rectangle. And I can see the shape and the spacing that it occupies, like a rectangle. Or I can quickly see it as a cylinder. See the ovular, the elliptical pattern of the opening at the top and how it repeats itself at the bottom and the fact that both sides are kind of in the vertical pattern? There's all these ways are right. They're not wrong in terms of your seeing. So let me give you another little formula. The formula we're going to work with today is called height times width equals depth. H times W equals D. And that whole idea is that you're trying to see what is this width times this height that we can put this onto a two-dimensional surface and create the illusion of depth. So look at the design. When you take your pencil at home, I want you to use your pencil and see how wide it is at its widest point. Then take that width and then I want you to turn it and I want you to count how many times does it take to make up its height. So take the width and then turn it and then count off to see how, what is this width times this height. What you're basically going to find is going to be a ratio. Now, this ratio is not one to one. It's not equal to its width to its height. It actually is about one to 1.5. So when I make my shape down here, remember, lock your wrist and I'm going to pull this shape, pull it down. Pull it down, and I'm try to make a rectilinear shape that's close to the same space that this occupies. So I'm going to run this across the bottom, and this is the key line right at the top. I want to lock it in, and I want to see if I can balance the structure out. Balance it, pull it over, pull it over, and wrap it straight across. 
Now, next thing I want to do is I want to check it. So if I take its width and I go like this and I come all the way up it and it's slightly a little too tall. So I want to drop it down just a little bit. So I'm going to adjust my line. Drop it down a little bit to make this item as close as we possibly can get it. Now, another helpful hint in terms of making this item, I would do is make a line straight down the middle, which is called a line of symmetry. So I'm going to take my wrist and lock it and pull it straight down the middle. Check it with your fingers and take and see if both sides are equal. Once you got that line going down the middle of the item, because this item is symmetrical, it's even equal on both sides. So you want to see, you want to make sure that you make it balanced out so you can make your drawing more accurate. The next thing I would do is also begin to look at the rim at the top. That this point is not as wide as the widest point inside of it. So I'm going to make this a couple of marks towards the top to begin to denote how much in do I see that item at the top in from its width, from its body. Now, make sure these spaces are pretty equal when you do that with those marks. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to find the next space is where the shoulders are at of the base. And I think they're about right here. If I pull a line through, I can find the space where the, the shoulders exist. That's going to be an area where I'm going to make a change up, a turn. I'll make a curve and a curve at that spot. Okay? So now we have the base components to get started. Next thing I'm going to do is begin to denote how big is that elliptical pattern at the top. And from your angle, it's a little different from mine because I can see in, inside a little bit more, but I'm going to try to draw it similar to what you're seeing on, the, on your um, computer screen. So I'm going to roll this around, roll it around, lock in the wrist, and I'm creating what is called an elliptical pattern. That's something some, some of you may need to practice me at home. Because a lot of times what we do is make the elliptical pattern and make it too flat on the corners. You want to make sure that you roll it around that it's equal on both sides. So practice making those elliptical patterns. Practice and practice and practice over and over again so you can get away from doing that and making it pointy on the ends. You want it to be fluid line going around. So the next thing you want to do is start working towards the neck. So I'm going to pull this down and around. And again, when you do one thing on one side, you want to make sure that you do a parallel mark on the opposite side. So roll it here and roll it over here, making sure that those two are working together. So the next step I'm going to do is once I get down here, I'm going to pull down towards, that, towards the shoulders of the vase. This is conceptually the head, this is the neck, this is the shoulders, this is the body. So I'm going to pull this down and around, wrapping it down until I get to the bottom. And then I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to see if I can repeat that, wrapping it down. One thing I'm looking for, because I got this rectangular shape, I'm looking to see if these spaces are equally not. Are they pretty much aligned with each other? That's what you want to check on. So I'm pulling this back up, pulling this back up. And I get down to the bottom, there's one more elliptical pattern down here that's parallel to the elliptical pattern up above. So roll that through. Lock the wrist, pull that elliptical pattern. Now you can see, I pretty much got this vase laid out here. Next thing I'm going to work on, after I got its structure, I'm going to start working towards trying to get some of that surface detail. And I'm going to quickly lay it in, just a little bit of it. And so I can lay in some of the tones that are coming around on the top and wrap them down the form. And I'm going to use, that, again, that crosshatch line to work down through the form. And then I'm going to pull back up against it again. Inside here, I'm seeing there's some darker tones sitting down below. I'm seeing some darker tones down and around the bottom of the form, wrapping up. I'm seeing that there's some reflective light information showing up. So I'm going to put some tone on both sides of it to make that little reflective light piece stand out. Curving back up to the top, seeing there's a little bit darker tone in the interior opening of it. Seeing there's a light, beautiful rim around this edge, putting some more tone up around that. And make sure that I create a little bit more contrast inside of here so that I can make that internal edge stand out some more and make that external edge pop just a little bit more. And you can see I can just keep building and building, working towards the internal part of this particular shape. And then pull some more lights, working on the surface of it, dropping those down. And then again, 
When you're doing values and tones, it's about building the values and tones. It's about layering them over and over again. And sometimes you want to use your eraser. You can help to pull some of those forms out to accentuate a little bit more. And sometimes you may have gotten a little too dark and you want to lighten it back up. So the eraser is not fixing mistakes, but adjusting the item and making it a little stronger visually. So I'm going to pull over here, create a little bit more tones across the top. And I'm going to stop it right where I am here. And again, I can go some more and create some of that little cash shadow that you're seeing that's coming off of the item on its side over here and so forth. I can put some of that information in and drop it down. And in my case, I got this little platform which is sitting on top of and I can lay some of that stuff in. Okay, folks? So, after you make these drawings, we want you to please send them into the Muscarelli Museum. We would love to put them up into our virtual gallery. And the site you want to send it to, send it to muscarelli in the house at gmail.com. I repeat, muscarelli in the house at gmail.com. It's all one big word. And you go to our virtual gallery site at the Muscarelli Museum, you can see all the exciting art shows that we have that, we, that we've been putting up online, but you have also have an opportunity to showcase your work in that space. So remember, folks, art is all around you.